Hi, this is Natalie at the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche. I am going to do today's fourth video and today's teaching lesson will be about lace. A little bit of a teaching lesson, I'm not an expert in lace. We'll go through some new finds of mine. I will give you box number two of my of my kitted up projects that are ready to go. I actually have three boxes. I've shown you one. I will show you the second. We'll talk a little bit about vintage greeting cards. And I will show you some new finds as well. So let's begin. First off, I'm going to talk about stash. Now, I don't need new stash, but of course I see something and I have to have it. Not all of my stash is actually charts and so forth. Some of my stash are things that I'm going to make projects out of, projects that I can sell and have other people make into projects that I can see. That's what I really would like to see. So let's go through this. This was on sale, so that's why I got it. My usual excuse. <laughs> anyway, we'll go through our new stash. This is the Little House Needleworks Louisa B. Snow Sampler. It's beautiful. This is going to take a very special linen. I do not know what kind of linen to do this on. It looks like there's some sort of lines in this linen that it was originally done on. Um, I talk about doing it on vintage homespun or vintage sand dune. I'm gonna find a very prim looking linen and do this. That's number one. Number two is just another button company, Lovebird. Somebody completed this project. I shared it on the vintage cross stitch niche. These are little buttons that comes with it. And it's just adorable. That I had to have. Here is the third chart. This chart I did not buy for the chart. This is an out of print uh, little chart kit called Hope 1727 by Chart Makers. And here it is. It is cute. But what I bought this for was this. The little rusty frame that it came with. I love it. Sometimes I'll buy a chart for its frame. Sometimes I'll buy it for the linen. And sometimes I'll buy it for both, and this is going to be very cute. Here's some linen finds. This is by Dames of the Needle, 30 Count North Pole. I think it's still available on her website on Dames of the Needle, which is on Etsy. So you may want to go look for this because it's really uncommon. I don't know when she'll have it again. And of course, I purchased a really cool linen, also from Dames of the Needle, called Witchy Surprise. I just think it's awesome. And Murky Sea, once again, Dames of the Needle. This one is like a murky sea. It's green, it's brown, and it's got a little variegation and primness to it. And finally, Witch's Brew by R&R. It's a small piece, but as you can tell, it is a pumpkin color. 32 count Witch's Brew. I will never see this again, this color, because R&R makes elusive, elusive fabrics <laughs> that come and go. And finally, for linen, I had to have this. It's called Mudstone by Exemplars of the Heart. Lovely, lovely brown and prim linen. 
Exemplars of the Heart, 35 count mudstone. Exemplars of the Heart does not, I don't even know if they're in business, but their charts are out of print. And certainly they don't make linen anymore. So that's the linen stash. Okay. And now let's talk about some other finds. These are from Kathy Barrick. These are little, these are available on her website. I think other people sell them. Uh, the Vin the, the uh, excuse me, cross stitch cover definitely has them. What's nice about these stickers, they're nice big stickers, are that this piece was wrought by and completed on title designer thread linen. You can't get more complete than that. And then you have cool pictures. So these are the cat ones, just to show you. It's a little boy. <laughs> they dress boys in, in dresses, that's a girl. These are in black dresses, which may be morning, morning dresses or black, along with black morning jewelry. They dressed for death, they dressed for life, but uh, whenever I see black, I think of the old morning, and uh, thank God that we have treatment for diseases now. And as you can see, they're all cats, because we love cats here. Anyway. So these are definitely available on her, uh, Kathy Barrick's own site. And they're also, also available on, on, on some other people's sites. Uh, the Cross Stitch Cupboard has some. I don't know if they actually have the cats. I don't remember what they have. Um, they do mail order. You can call there. Or if you live in Florida, when you visit, you can buy these there. And then let's look at my vintage finds. Check out this fabric. Can you see the whole thing? It's 12 days of Christmas. It is some sort of scarf or something, but it's cotton, cotton blend, and it's gonna make a great back to a pillow. So we're gonna do something Christmassy or neat, and this will be the back of a pillow. When you are out and about, especially at vintage shops and thrift shops and so forth, look for fabric. Look for old tablecloths, the cotton tablecloths, that uh, maybe are very inexpensive because they have a stain and you can cut them up. And this one's not cut, but of course this wasn't a tablecloth. But, um, and make really cool fabrics to use for your projects, for your finishing, even if you don't do finishing. I don't do any major finishing. I don't sew pillows because I'd rather give it to the finisher and have her make it perfect, but I certainly can give her the fabric. And you can bring your own. This says printed, I don't know when this is from. This says made in the USA. There's no date, so that tells me that it's, it's not new because things made in the USA in general aren't new anymore. Here's another bit of stash. I have no idea where this is from, except that it says made in Japan on the bottom. It's a little hinged box with a sewing machine and flowers, just really cute. This is going to be a kit that I'm going to put for sale. I have to find the right linen, the right buttons, and the right pins and whatever else I can find, vintage -y to make into a cool sort of kit. This I found. Um, this is another Christmas item, which I found. This is a tin. It is a very cool looking tin. The whole idea will be to maybe put the pin cushion in the cover inside and use this for the notions. This also will be a kit eventually. Just to show you some of the really cool graphics, you can see the these guys. These are the um, these are the uh, elves. Here is Santa up here, resting his feet by the fire. 
check it out. There's a boat in the window for toy. I thought that was kind of cute in an airplane. And here's the sleigh. While sand is resting, here's your sleigh and your reindeer. This is definitely not new. It's probably 70s, maybe earlier. Maybe 70s, 80s, 60s. It's got such interesting graphics, it's gonna make a great little prim project. What else did we find this week? Aha! This will also be a kit because I have two of them. I'm gonna keep one and sell one as a kit. There are bells tied together. Somebody made this. Your ornament is gonna go in the middle and be finished as an ornament. And you can even put a neat backing on it, some cool fabric or felt. And this is awesome. Somebody made it and we're gonna make it into something else. Some interesting wooden items. This one was purchased for the color. It's green. Once again, a little Christmas item, a very cool spool. This was purchased because of the black on the outside. I love the, this looks like oak in the middle and black. You put your, you can put your, uh, your pin cushion up here. This one was purchased because I sort of like the graphic on the end and it's squat and it's short. And I think having ones that, here, let's see if we can do this that are together, hmm, there we go. Well, <laughs> I'm not too good at this. Let's, let's, straighten, let's straighten this out. There we go. So the ones that are sort of together look kind of neat, a different heights. And this one was purchased because of who she is. I thought she's adorable. Who knows how old this is? She's got plenty of room here for a nice little pin cushion. Will I keep her? Will I sell her? I don't know. If I sell her, it'll be as a little kit. This is old. I have no idea who made it, but it's old. And finally, well, we have a final three things. We have this Singer box. I looked online, you can't find some of these. It is a space age box. It looks like a uh, spaceship, so you know it's mid-century modern. Made by Singer was, they used to put their attachments in here, like a buttonhole attachment or whatever. Right now I just have my, uh, I put some needles, sewing machine needles in here. Not that I'm very good at sewing, but I do have a sewing machine. And what a cool little project this could make. This, even something to keep stuff in. Ah, a lace jar. Check it out. This is a really neat jar. wasn't very expensive. It's pressed glass. I don't think there's anything special about it other than how pretty to put your needlework supplies in a big jar like this. And finally, Art Nouveau scissors. Can you see? Is it focusing? Please tell me it's focusing. There we go. They're just beautiful. With the flowers, they're sterling silver. There's no maker. These were probably used for manicure scissors maybe or needlework. Don't let the fact that they're curved scissors deter you from nice scissors because they're curved. They're great for getting under stitches when you have to pull them out. And the fine little pointy tips are what I like. Sterling silver, easily 100 years old, maybe older, have stood the test of time because they made things very well. Just lovely. Put this over here. Okay, so we have now gone over our, our new finds of the week. 
and we have gone over our some of our vintage finds. Let's talk about lace. So here's just a little bit of lace. Believe it or not, I ordered more lace this week and I have more in a drawer. I buy it when I find interesting lace. Sometimes I'll buy it at the antique show. A rare, you don't really find this at thrift stores. Uh, not, not really. Occasionally, if you find a sewing lot, like in a big bag, you can open it and find all kinds of stuff like this. I sometimes get it online with lots, you know, and it's, you get what you get. And I just ordered some Christmas colors for some of the little Christmas things I want to do. But let me show you some different kinds of lace and trim. This is machine. You can tell it's machine. It's very perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. It's very pretty. You can put a piece of this on just about any project, tie it in a bow, use it as a hanger for an ornament. It's endless. What is the more interesting lace is some of the handmade types of lace. Was this handmade? I'm not sure about this one. I'm going to assume it is. Somebody crocheted this and used techniques to make this. This can go, look, around jars. You can get wide lace and put it around your jar, around your candle. You can take a piece of lace and I'll just, this is by Primitive Hair, by the way. I made this uh, two, years, two years ago. It was a little kit, but you see how she included a little piece of lace there? Just an itty bitty trim of lace and a vintage button. Really made, made the piece. This is some more, this is definitely handmade. Handmade lace. You can sort of see, they sewed it together, I think, so it doesn't fray at the ends. But handmade trimming. All the handmade trimming, it'll all look different. Let me see if I can find some more handmade stuff so you can see. Definitely handmade. And this stuff has some stains on it, but Look how pretty for your trim, for your, for your, on the bottom of your sampler. To free up some dead space, even to fragment. Um, here's some wide stuff. This is also handmade. Again, put it around your bottles, your jars, your vintage containers. This is not a vintage container, but I'm just showing you is how, how can you use lace? What should you look for? Look for stuff that looks hand crocheted. Look for stuff that looks old, smells old, looks old. But it doesn't have to be old lace. This is machine made trimming, an interesting trim. I think this would look great with buttons in there. Sometimes I'll include trim with, uh, if I sell something. A lot of times I will, actually, because I like trim. Um, this is contemporary. This is definitely machine made. None of this is that contemporary. Most of it is probably made in America. It's not made in China like a lot of stuff is nowadays. But this is an interesting, I sort of, it looks almost like snowballs. I thought this would look cute on a Christmas. Anyway, I'm not going to go through everything of lace in here. The more interesting, the better. You can get some lace is very, very expensive. Some is very inexpensive. You're much better off buying a lot of lace and giving away the extra than buying it by the yard because sometimes by the yard it's expensive. Unless you just want a little bit. Keep it, I usually keep it in jars like this, containers, drawer, I have it in a drawer. I did dye some with coffee and tea just to see 
what it would look like. Now, this didn't take, this one didn't take up the coffee very well because there's polyester in this, it just didn't. However, not bad, very prim. This one took it up much better and this is almost burnt. On an old looking sample or something, you're trying to look very vintage. This really is gonna look nice. This was an experiment. So you can do what you want with your lace. I mean, I had tons of it, so I was able to do this. Okay, so, up. Oh, this almost got away from me. My, another new acquisition, Mary Brown, Hands Across the Sea. There is a video on YouTube that uh, takes place, Gary Parr did it, takes place at the attic. They had this done on the wall, it's magnificent. Let's see, what did she say, vintage buttercream? Yeah, that would look really nice. Just a lovely, lovely, lovely thing. Okay, so, I'm just going to show you, because what happens here is I have things all over, so I forget. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you two, uh, one more vintage find and one thing that was in our house that was left to me. Well, not left to me by somebody I know, but left to me by, a, uh, by whoever owned our house. Found this at a thrift store. It looks like one of those Sudbury trays. It's actually got dust on it, I gotta clean it, but. Originally I bought this and said, wow, I'm gonna make a kit out of this and it's gonna be nice and I'm gonna sell it. And then I said, this poor person put all this work into this needlepoint and her family just gave it away. So I'm gonna keep it and we may make it part of a kit somehow. We may make a, this is the bottom part kit instead of sometimes I have like a, a vintage lace napkin or something we, we'll see I'm not sure about this one but that was another fine and here's something that was left in the house when we when we bought it I'm gonna have to move the camera back hopefully you can see it this is the owner of our house, his toolbox. He passed away a number of years ago. It's got doors, slide. It's a toolbox, solid wood. Almost looks like somebody just made it. This I thought was interesting. You probably could maybe slip your, ow, slip your, um, Fabric in there. I will get rid of that nail first though. I'll pound it down. It's got some cool vintage hardware. First I said, what am I going to do with this thing? I'm just going to sell it. And then I lifted it and realized it's heavy and I don't want to mail it. So I decided to uh, keep it, and I guess I'm going to put needlework supplies in it. My husband just built a garage outside, and I'm waiting to use his little office as my needlework office, because right now my stuff is sort of all over the house. And then I'll have my own display, and it'll be in there. And we'll put probably floss. I think that would hold all the floss I have easily. I think that's going to be my new floss. I just got that idea. So that's going to be my new floss holder. Anyway, that was in the house when we uh, bought the house a few years back, so I've had it for a while. But now, as promised, I'm going to go through a bunch of kitted kits just for fun. So get ready. Not all these are kitted, but most are. This is one that is not kitted. It is out of print. It is Kathy Barrick Blue Spruce. 
It's very adorable. She did it on light exemplar, which is not this fabric that they show in the photo, or it's a bad depiction of it. Light exemplar is very light. Uh, I think I'll do it on a vintage fabric when I get to this, but I do like it. It's really pretty. It's out of print, like I said. If you do find it, it's a good thing. This is Midsummer Night Designs. It's called the Christmas Sampler, a Christmas. And the reason I bought this is because of the same. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all year. Now, anybody who knows me well knows that I'm a Christmas Carol fanatic and I love everything to do with a Christmas Carol. Over at the cross stitch cupboard, I have a uh, God Bless Us Everyone sampler uh, piece by Primitive Hair up on their wall. <laughs> she keeps it up there because I entered it in a contest last year. Boohoo, I didn't win, but that's a very prim, primitive hair piece, and uh, I just love it. So anytime I come across something, let me put the light on. I just feel like my light. I hope you guys can see. Anytime I come across something that, oh, let me show you that again. <laughs> that has a Christmas carol in it, I buy it. And this is said to be done by, on Bittersweet by Lakeside Linens, which I have, which is pink. So I don't understand how that's pink and that looks white. But anyway, the colors are real pretty and this is one to be done. I just realized I'm not 100% sure about this fabric. So what I'm gonna do is keep this aside. Now there's too much light, so hold on. Okay. Next, this is the Heart's Content Colonial Village Schoolhouse Sampler. Was purchased mainly because of this little scene. It's real pretty. Her kits come with everything you need. Um, I don't know, I don't feel like opening it right now, but it's got tons of floss. This is Glenshi Linen. They're done over one, so it's a little... It takes me a while to get to them. I have about five kits, and so far I've only done one, so... I just like that little thing. This is kit is not a cross-stitch kit, but this is a door hanger kit that is done with felt and sequins. And these old Brusilla kits are definitely not made anymore. They were all made in the US. Wow, now they're Chinese. I have bought modern kits and they're horrible compared to these. This one's from 1990, made in Pennsylvania. They just don't make them. I will do an entire video just on Christmas and um, other holiday uh, kits, ornaments that are sequined and the felt kits and all this stuff. I have a ton of these, which I've done many, many and I've given away a lot, especially Christmas ornaments. I just love them with the sequins and everything. And they're really easy to do. And this just happened to be mixed in there. Are you guys ready? I got more. This is BG1874. This is actually new. Um, it somehow ended up in this box, so I apologize, but I just bought this, having seen it, and it's magnificent. I cannot wait to kick, kick this up, but this is BG1874. And it says to do it on 36 count buttercream. I'm gonna do this on a real prim one and I'm not sure which one, but something extremely grungy looking is what I'm gonna do it on. Stay tuned, I will let you know one day. This is the Primitive Hair, a stitcher sampler. I do not have any fabric to do this on. I just wanna show it to you. 
Isn't it cute? It's got the little bees. It's got needle and thread. It came with a, a little pack of thread to do this with. I accidentally saw the linen. I don't know. It's not even listed. I bought it with linen to do this and I accidentally sold it. So I'm gonna find linen. Once again, it's gotta be grungy linen. But this is really neat. I told you I had this kitted up, but some I don't have kitted up correctly. This is Serenity by Erica Michaels. And you all know the, know the uh, saying, God grant me the serenity. I have this semi kitted up because I have all the floss and I do not have any, um, I haven't decided what I'm doing this on. I think I'm gonna do this on e-designs, some really nice, neat linen. Oh, this is awesome. This is with thy needle and thread. Once again, I do not have this kitted up. I lied, I said I had all these kitted up, but these were together. This is called Soar with the Eagles. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. I'm going to do this on, I don't know which linen. I think they use Weak Style Works linen for this, but we're gonna do a different linen. Heart in Hand, We Heart in Hand, little itty bitty project. I bought this to make it for my friend. Of course, I bought it two years ago and haven't gotten to it like everything else. The reason I wanna make this for my friend is she's a hand surgeon, so. This is another one that I, I got a while back. It's called All You Can Eat. And it's got, it's got a fish theme. The one I'm going to make is this one. Better a small fish than an empty dish. Well, we go fishing a lot, so that's a lot, that's true. It's not always true. My husband sometimes throws back the small ones, but they're not, it's not very big. Ooh, I can't show that to you. It's not very big. It's not hard to do. This was purchased, I believe this was a kit from, I'm not sure who, it said Stitcher's World. So I think it was a kit from Stitcher's World. It is their friendship sampler. The colors are so pretty. Isn't that pretty? Long out of print. I don't know if you'd ever find this again. Maybe you'd have to search Etsy, eBay, so forth. But um, it came with white linen. I will not be doing it on white linen. But look at the little, look at the cat. I'm sure you've never seen this because I never saw it until I found it. And this is Cinnamon Stick Christmas by Homespun Elegance. And I bought this to do this project right there. Why? Because I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all year. It's from a Christmas Carol. This one, I do have a uh, 36 count fabric to do it on. It's a plain fabric, I'm not sure. This looks like vintage sand dune, I think. No, maybe not, I'm not sure. Clay, no, I don't know. I may or may not use this fabric because I think this deserves kind of a, a really cool fabric. And I do have, don't ask me why it's in this giant bag, but I do have lots of floss to do it with. We're not done yet, guys. Let Freedom Ring by Lila Studio. I have this completely kitted up. What do I have it kitted up with? This, I believe this is Lakeside Linen. No, it's R&R &R Ligonier, Ligonier Latte. Just a nice big piece of it. Ligonier Latte is a very is a very nice linen. Can you see the color? I can't wait to start this. 
it's it's really nice. So this one is ready to go, as opposed to some of those. Let's keep going. This is box, like I said, this is box number two. Sarah Mary Lockworthy by Under the Sea. Can you see this whole thing? With all the silks and a very large piece of linen. And what linen is there? Lakeside Exemplar. I like exemplar. I don't like dark light exemplar. It's too light for me. But look at the size of this piece. It's absolutely huge. <laughs> I don't know how big this sampler is. I don't know why I have such a big piece. Let's see. On um, what I don't even know what count this is. So it is a big, it's a big sampler. On 36 count, it's 24 by 19. So actually this is an oversized piece. I bought this directly from them. They had a special, and if you bought the the whole kit, she it was a very good deal, like a really good deal. So I just ordered the whole kit. This is not on my priority list to do, only because it has a lot of a lot of very uh, beautiful specialty stitches in it. But it is on my list of stuff that I will do. This is heartstrings. I bought this on eBay. Somebody had kitted this up. These are really cute little, cute little uh, ornaments. And this person included this charm pack. And there's a lot of charms in here. Brass cool looking charms. Actually made in the USA, in Patchog, New York. And just, they included all the threads and a bunch of little squares of uh, linen, green, and to do this on. So it was a bargain. I got it on eBay, cheap, very cute. This is, this is called The Spirit of Christmas, and I thought it was adorable. This is available on eBay, I've seen it. It came with uh, basic linen, uh, natural linen, I think once this is all done, it's going to be very pretty. So, trying to keep these separate. Then, let's see. This is Kaniki's. Kaniki's linen. I promised you that I had Kaniki's linen kitted up. Kaniki is on vacation, so can't go on her website, but look at this linen. Have you ever seen anything like it? Super, super prim linen. And I did pull it up on my phone. Let me see if I can show you what this is made for. There's no picture on it. There's just the chart, so I don't want to ruin it. So hold on one second. Let me find the picture. Here we go. This is called something Tom. <laughs> And you're not going to be able to see it. It's too bright. So that's the end of that. But I wanted to show you Kaniki's linen. If you are not a prim lover, if you can't work on very soft linen, don't get it. Because <laughs> it's, you never, it's going to be hard to pull tight. But it is really beautiful. And I got a real big piece of it, the actual piece I'm doing. It's called something, if you want to look it up, Google it. It's called um, something to do with Tom. Very cute. And then this, this is Mama Snow sewing carrots. Something about this I just liked. So I bought a piece of fabric and all the, the threads. This is on the back burner, one day I'll do it. There will be an end to this, no worries. This is the entire flock. 
this is what it is is you get a bunch of pieces there are people on here I think who've done it on on you can find on YouTube and they're all individual charts of different pieces therefore it's expensive so I bought them all together I did get a little bit of a discount not much but and this is done on Weeks Dye Works Pear Linen it looks like a red pear. It's actually a very beautiful color. I love this color. I'm not a huge fan of Weeks Dye Works Linen, but this color can't be beat, and I have not found anything that looks like this color in any other, so it will be done on this. It's a large, it's a large piece, but I think it's, it's very doable in terms of the flock by Sam Sarah. Aha, Prairie Schooler. This is a sought-after chart right now, and it wasn't when I first got it. Farmer's Alphabet. Really super cute. I have it all kitted up with all the floss, and that's a lot of floss. <laughs> but there's a lot of colors. And I was going to do it on this Weeks Dye Works gingham fabric. I just thought it would look awesome on this, so I bought a piece, perfect size piece. This will be done soon because I've, I've had this a long time. <laughs> I keep for... This is Joy, Peace, and Yule. with these buttons, a whole lot of them. Can you see them all? Really cute Christmas buttons. And the way this goes is this tree is made and all those buttons are hung like ornaments from the tree. And I saw this done and it's very pretty. And it's not a big piece. I just got this piece of, this is putty, which is real pretty. Weeks Dye Works putty. Once again, I just like the color. I thought it, all the colors worked really nice on it. Can you see? So, and this, this is going to be easy. This is going to be one I bring on a trip with me because it's not a hard thing to do. It wasn't cheap because of all those buttons, but I think it's going to be really cute. That's been out of print, I'm sure, a long time. Snow Babies by Victoria Sampler. This one, I just thought it was adorable. It came with the, the little pack of thread and a template, and that's it. Uh, this will be done on white linen. I think that white linen, hmm, let me find it. I'm going to pull out of this package. Here you go, white linen, and put it in here. Problem solved. Actually, a linen that's sparkly would look really good too. So this is very pretty. This is, I don't know where this is from. This is a sort of a kit. And I just thought the colors were very pretty. It's a reproduction sampler. And it came with everything. It looks like it's from a magazine, but then it came with a card, so I'm not sure. And it actually came with this really nice oatmeal-y colored linen. This linen, I don't know what it is. It sort of feels like legacy linen, but it's, it's got a really nice feel to it. I don't know, and it's, it's very nice. So I know this is going to look really pretty when I get to it, but it's not a huge sample. I should be able to do that. This is one that's very sad. I, I worked, I don't know, two weeks on it, and I, ripped, and I had to rip it all out because I used too small a piece of fabric. This is Barbara Anna Designs Love Never Fails. I would like, I was thinking of doing this on the Bolin linen, actually. 
I don't know how it would look, but I actually, I'm, I'm going to see if this piece is big enough. But what I did pull for it is just dirty Belfast, and this is a pretty big piece, so I don't think so. I don't, I don't think that primitive hair one is big enough, but I thought it would look really nice. This is from Creative Poppy. Anything you buy in Creative Poppy, uh, you cannot, you, is for your own use only. You're not allowed to resell it. I couldn't even reprint this, and I spilled coffee on it. But this was supposed to be my own marriage sample, and I hadn't done it. A lovely kit from eBay called the Green Linen Sampler. I think it looks black in the video, but it is green. Somebody bought this and started it. So you can see there's a line of stitches in here. It's just very pretty. It's reprodu antique reproduction by the Scarlet Letter. It says finish size is 12 by 9. It's not very big. It's going to be really pretty when done. Actually, I think I'm going to keep this one out because I'm going to work on this tonight. Because I need a break from my big one. <laughs> the Holiday Sampler by Ramsgate. This came as a complete kit. Can you see? It has little angels. way out of print. It came with linen and floss. It was very inexpensive. And I know this is going to be real pretty. This is one I could take with me somewhere because it's not big. Put this here. Here is Jan Lin Collector Series. Not made anymore. Made in the USA. I just want to show you that. For the youngsters that are watching this, Things used to be made in the U.S., and they were made better than they are now. This comes with Ada and floss. I think Janlin floss, I don't know what it is, but I've never had an issue with it. I think it's, uh, it's got to be DMC or close equivalent. It also, the Ada, this will not be done on Ada. Why did I buy this? I love the Santa. Just look at him. He's got a beehive. It's got different, different borders. One, two, three, four different styles of border. Uh, it's got a little Christmas tree. He's got bees buzzing around, the duck, the rooster. This is made a long time ago, yet it's modern. Well, it says 2002. That's not really, that's 18 years ago, 17 years ago. It's hard to believe, but it's, it's so nice. If you see this, I would love to see somebody actually do this. I'm saving this. I'm, I'm actually going to put this in my pile of stuff that I need to work on in, in terms of making sure I have the right fabric for it because I'm not going to do this on Ada. Although it would look beautiful on Ada. This is as nice as any design I've ever seen. I mean, look at the little poinsettias in the, in the border. I'm sure most of you have never seen this because they're not common. We're almost at the end. <laughs> I'm laughing because this is just box two out of three. This is a really nice Hearts Content. It came with a high quality frame and something that says Simple Abundance with a house, with a rabbit. It's really beautiful. Unfortunately, it's actually, this comes with, with, what does it come with? French silk floss, and it comes with silk gauze. So this is one you do on silk gauze. It's very, very pretty. This is from the Silver Needle and it's Cherished Stitches Winter Wonders Limited Release, which makes me wonder if this was just for their shop. I've never seen it. It's a kit. It comes with everything. It comes with your fabric, your flosses, buttons, everything. And it's just lovely. It comes in a little envelope. I thought it was so cute. 
And anyway, um, these are things you can find. It's a surprise. I, I didn't even know about this. This is from the cross stitch cover. This is a cat. This is called the Stoneware Cat. Little kit comes with a little trim and everything. This is a complete kit to make the pillow. Very cute. 2019 Nashville Needlework Market Kit. Limited edition. This is really cute as well. Another Hearts Content Kit. This is comes with Glenshe Linen. This is a color of Glenshe Linen that's darker than the one, other ones I have. Uh, it's got DMC, Gentle Arts. She loads, just load. look at all the colors. Loads up her her kits with everything you could want and I just thought it was so pretty with the palm tree and the pineapple and the kitty cat I think I don't even know what that is this is cute this I got at the thrift store it comes it's an old kit with Ada of course white Ada but it's a partridge in a pear tree motif. I was just going to use this motif. Actually, this might look good in there. This is perfect. Oop, let's get this part. Let's get this right. That might look really cute. Let me keep these together. A Mill Hill kit, my only Mill Hill kit. I've done, I've done some of the ornaments. This is Ravens with everything known to man that you could possibly need, including a very nice frame. Unbelievable bargain price I got this for. Another Hearts Content Colonial Charm Sampler. I thought this was very cute. Anything with a cat in the house. the kitty cat. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but in the decision is the Lord that endures. This came with DMC, linen. The kits are marvelous. They're just really beautiful. Here's a little kitted up project from Homespun Elegance once again. I thought this was just so pretty. Look at the little winter village. Very prim, very nice. Got a small piece of fabric to go with it. Some linen silk fabric I've never heard of, but it's awfully thin. But this one is just sort of thrown together because it's just a Lastly, Colonial Yorktown by the Hearts Content Sampler. This is a magnificent sampler. It's real pretty. Look at the house. The house is what makes the sampler with the shadows. It's unusual. Once again, Maureen puts everything in these kits. Even some sort of card, look at this. Uh, recreated by occasions remembered during these stitching moments. Look at the card she even includes. Like a commemorative card. The Hearts Content kits are the most magnificent kits I have ever seen. Unfortunately, most of them are uh, done on, on uh, over one, which I find difficult because if I make a mistake, and sometimes I'm tired after work, I don't make a mistake. It's very hard for me to pull it out. So you need patience. And I've done it. I've done one of these, so I've done it. But look, look how pretty. Even even the way she cut the fabric, she with pinking shears and very pretty. 
Is there anything else that we left out? I think we've got all of our all, all of our things to show you, at least today. Um, the last segment is going to be on vintage postcards. So we did a little teaching today on the vintage uh, lace and trim. Hold on. Let me just get you something. Oh, hold on. I purchased this at a show. It's a vintage, actually not a vintage, it's an antique postcard. Antique means more than 100 years old. That she somehow got glittery, some sort of glittery spray on, put this trim around it, put a little, a little, uh, cover on it and made into an ornament. I've given these for gifts. I didn't make this, like I said. I'm going to, because they look easy, and she showed me how to do it. This one is dated 1913. It says, how are you today? Would love to have been with you for Christmas, but could not. Hope you are real well. We both extend to you our heartiest New Year's greetings. Many returns, Will and Ida. 12, 13, 12, 30, 1913. Look at the way it was addressed. No zip code. The name of the person and the town they lived in. So, I like reading the greetings on the back. Some of them are sad. I'm just gonna show you a few of these postcards. Uh, it is my dream. Now, they're all over 100 years old. They're really, these companies are, there's no, nobody, nothing that says I can't reproduce these into some designs. That is maybe my next thing to do, to try. It's not like I have all the time in the world to do things. I work full time, more than full time. But uh, this is something I enjoy doing. My, my daughter even, she texted me the other day and told me how much she liked my video, so that made my whole, my whole year <laughs> her telling me because she doesn't cross-stitch, but she liked the video. And anyway, uh, I'm going to go through some of these, but I, I'm going to take some designs, and I just have a sampling to show you. Christmas greetings. Tis not always we get what we want Christmas Day, but I hope you will want what you get anyway. And they have a barrel of Christmas candy. Postmarked New Jersey, 1918. Wishing you, you happiness this Merry Christmas. It's a Santa that is a wood, woodland Santa. I think he's on the telephone. Christmas greetings. This one is 1909. It's got gold on it. This one says, In Christmas streets the cold winds blow, On Christmas earths the Yule logs glow, In Christmas hearts a great joy lives. I wish you all that the season gives. And this is from Catskill, New York. And there's no date on it, but it's, yep, it is 1914. One cent stamp from 1914. Here's another golden one. Pretty design. This one's dated 1910. He writes, you must be a great big boy now and very handsome. You have been very good to Mama. As it is so near Christmas, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from Aunt something. Joyful greetings from Aunt Lib Edna, 1910. A Merry and Bright Christmas I'm having a good time, wish you were here. Classic. <laughs> Here's another Merry Christmas, a shiny one. Dated 1911. 
I presume you are glad you are having vacation. I will have vacation from now till after New Year's. I am glad I have to go practice now. So much for Christmas. It must be from a kid. Christmas greetings. Look at the tree. I love that. This one's a blank one. Kids ice skating. Says, we will be there New Year's on the first train. Suppose you will be to the depot, depot to meet us. So I guess she's not asking, she's just stating, and this was 1913. Like a breath of a flower or sunshine's bright ray, may this remembrance find you happy this Christmas day. The beautiful snow scene, 1914. Here's an angel with the girls just reading the book. Just says Merry Christmas. This one says a Merry Christmas, peace on earth, goodwill to men. As true today as it was then, when on the first pale Christmas morn our Savior onto earth was born. Dated 1909. This one is really, says New York and Berlin. <laughs> from Bloomington, Illinois. Dear Uncle Jim, we want you to come down as soon as possible for Papa is very bad. He has just been lingering, lingering, since Friday night. We are very much frightened about his condition. The doctors seem to be at a loss to know what to do. Lovingly, Catherine. It's a Christmas greeting that says, uh, Grandpa's dying, basically. And uh, back then, there wasn't, the medicine wasn't what it was today. and. Uh, People didn't have the telephone to call. They just sent it in a postcard. And lastly, I love the colors. Once again, this is 1912, and it just says, with best wishes. And these have stood the test of time, these postcards. Like I said, I I'm, I'm, would like to get some motifs from these, and actually, I don't know how to do it, but I could certainly figure it out. Anyway, I think we've done quite a bit today. I'm sorry these videos are so long. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun for me to talk about this stuff and to think about it and to look through it and say, what, what am I gonna do next? And um, please join us on the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche group on Facebook. Uh, it is a discussion and an, a buy-sell group. I sell some stuff. The stuff I sell is extra stuff I don't need, and also I do sell some kits that I make, some things that I put together that I think will make interesting projects, and I would like to give it to other people. And I sell it. I'm not. This is not a business for me. It's just a uh, more of a hobby, little little thing. We have giveaways. There will be a. Uh, a giveaway on our next, our next, uh, our next, I'm sorry, uh, video, my next video. What am I going to give away on my next video? I'm just looking at my table and deciding and saying, here we go. This is a piece of linen. It is Weeks Dye Works Onyx Linen. Obviously black, but certainly useful. I had originally bought this linen to do the Brenda Dravet piece on, and I decided I didn't want to do it on this. I wanted a more uh, vintagey looking, but this is very pretty, very nice linen. It's an eighth. So I haven't had that many people comment, but um, whoever comments on this video, on my next video, I will pick you randomly. Well, not pick you, but pick one of the people. So, looks like your odds are going to be pretty good because I haven't really, <laughs> I don't have that many followers yet. Anyway, enjoy your Saturday. Thank you for watching.